Hey guys, so I've been asked to do a follow-up video to the Gen 3 Build-A-Base file and talk about what to do with the transmission. Um, so with the, we're going to go back to the stock tune file, our uh, 2004 GMC Yukon. And the nice thing with the foil 60s and 80s, uh, I guess you could say it's the nice thing, um, is that they're, uh, you're, you have some limitations, okay? So if you have a bone stock transmission that has not been modified, there are some things that you're not going to want to touch, okay? So transmission diag, no need to adjust any of this. We come over here to the trans tab, general, nothing to do there. Manual, if this was a, this was a manual car, you would set this to zero like it is to get rid of the skip shift. Um, we go into shift general, nothing here that we need to talk about. We're actually gonna go backwards. We're gonna start with torque management. Torque management is the clamp um, that the computer puts down on the shifts. Uh, and you can see it in the spark, uh, under the spark uh, PID that you're logging. So these values are a percentage of spark that gets pulled. A lot of people will go in and they will um, zero these out. You want the engine to be able to pull spark out between the shifts. That way you can have your coffee, you can haul your kids around, your wife can drive it, your girlfriend can drive it. Um, if you have a transmission that is a little bit older and maybe you've put a camshaft and heads and, and you know, exhaust and a hot tune up in, you know, and you're, you know, you, you hit it pretty hard a good bit. You want to be able to save the transmission. What I always tell people is go out and drive the transmission in the, in its stock form like this. Okay. Uh, and then go out and maybe take away half, go out and drive it again. If you see a huge difference, you can keep it in, or maybe instead you can do 25%. So you could go 0.75 or move 25%. Typically, I don't see much of a difference, especially in some of the higher horsepower builds um, where the shifts can get uh, can get pretty radical. Um, I actually prefer to leave this in. I leave it in on my own truck and a lot of the vehicles that I tune, um, especially if you have a forced induction vehicle with a moderate to mild or not built at all transmission where you blow through the shifts and things like that, it's likely because you're overpowering the transmission on the shifts and you need you do need to pull that spark out, okay? You have a performance table here. I'm not sure why these values are the way that they are, but this is pulling more uh, spark out, so we leave those alone. Um, so torque management, leave that, leave that like it is. Torque converter, if you have a stock converter uh, or a, an aftermarket converter, you would go in here to this minimum table and you would make this something like 85 to increase the converter pressure um, so that uh, the clutches move uh, faster. But uh, if you have a stock converter, even if you have a camshaft and things like that, you will leave all this the same. Uh, the big one, including if you're towing, is this uh, apply and release table. Under the torque converter apply release normal table, Second and uh, the second apply and release, those are set to 256, so the converter will never lock in second gear. You also want to go ahead and keep third gear from locking, and the release is just kind of a uh, just to make it look clean. If it's never if it ne it's never going to hit this, so you could leave these releases whatever you want. It wouldn't matter. Fourth gear, anything above 50% um, throttle, we want that to be 256 as well. Um, we would go here in fourth gear. This is where you're going to be cruising on the interstate. Set this to something like 55, and then down here something maybe five miles an hour less. Um, this is these are settings that I run in, in my my personal truck. They work great. Okay, so that would be your normal table, um, and that's a really good place to start. Um, so torque management, leave it alone. Torque converter, uh, keep it from locking in third gear and uh, and fourth gear. Um, in the areas that I that I specified, uh, you really don't want the torque converter locking under full throttle unless you have a torque converter that is specific to uh, from the manufacturer that it can do such. You can pick up some mile an hour, um, some ET on the drag strip, but most of you guys are driving around street vehicles, so this is going to work just fine. It's not going to be boggy. You'll be able to have plenty of passing power and traffic, so uh, this is just a really good way to go. Shift timing, um, the higher the number. Uh, the longer the shift is going to take. You can see this in the in the scanner. If you notice what the mouse is doing, where it kind of makes this like half rectangle deal, this dip kind of hole type thing, uh, you'll see that in the shifts. Okay, um, this is the normal table. Uh, so 0 0.5, 0 0.6, those are those are long shifts. Okay, if you go to your performance table, everything is set to 0.3. You could go in here and just copy and paste this right off the bat. This is one of those things I feel like once you get the 
the shift timing cleaned up and there's no dips or holes, you can manipulate the pressures and some of the other things uh, that we're getting ready to talk about rather easily. If this is not aggressive enough, uh, you know, down low, you might could go just a little bit more aggressive with like a 275. Um, or maybe even like a 225 actually to shorten that up and then under full throttle where you're going to have a little more shift pressure here in a minute, you might want it, you might want it to slow it down just, just a hair, do something like that. And you come over here and you kind of interpolate this. Um, but typically pasting the performance table, if possible, is going to work uh, just fine. So, um, I recommend doing that. Shift pressures, along with torque management, uh, you can set your max pressure to 96. It's kind of a good number. We're not going to touch the downshifts over here. We're only going to look at the upshifts. If you go into normal, okay, this is what it looks like. Um, so when you add a things like a camshaft or a torque converter, you're going to want a little bit of extra shift pressure to make the shifts happen quicker. They will seem sloppy if not. Um, there is a performance table uh, where you can copy and paste this. And you can go in here to normal, and you can hit paste, and that's going to work pretty good. Um, you could also uh, potentially go in here and highlight the whole thing, kind of as a as a moderate measure. This applies if you're towing as well. This would work just the same. You could hit apply. Uh, we're going to have one over here that's going to hit 100, so it's going to hit our it's going to be over our max. So we'd want to set this to 96. Any of them that are over 96. Um, you're going to find a lot of the time down here in this region, this is going to be too aggressive. Okay, um, Maybe, maybe not. A higher horsepower vehicle with more torque. There's no way to actually log torque in a Gen 3. Um, so this is all just an, this is going to have to be an estimation on your part. Um, so what I've found a lot of the times is if we uh, change all of this, we could go back and we could just start with something like this. Just the 2, 3, and 3, 4 shift. See how it drives. You might find that... Um, you know, halfway into a hit, you need to add, um, what's our max, 96, 90 over there, so we'll add six. You could do, oops, sorry, hit the plus sign. You could do something like this, and you could interpolate this to make sure it's smooth. Um, it just depends, you know, there's some builds where um, they make so much torque down low, and especially if you've got a built transmission with some extra added goodies in them, um, where they're going to shift more aggressively with just with the hard parts you will have to uh, keep this table more moderate uh, torque management uh, and taking that out and then increased shift pressure is what will kill these four speed transmissions um, so you might go something like this uh, you might find the two three somewhere out in this range needs another six so you can go here and interpolate some of this and interpolate some of this Make sure that always the numbers are following the trend going up. Okay, so you don't want to have a, you know, you don't want to have a dip, right there. So that's the shift pressures. Um, so again, just to reiterate, torque management. Leave that alone. Torque converter. Keep it from locking. Um, you know, only around that cruise speed. Um, you know, on the interstate. Shift timing. Copy and paste your performance table. See what it does. Shift pressure. Kind of the same thing. The big one every talk. Everyone talks about. Um, the Blue Cat tool does not do anything shift pressures or shift timing related. Um, and typically the, the torque converter stuff, you just need to do what I just showed you how to do for towing, for high performance, for just driving around town. That's going to work just great. I actually like the stock shift scheduling. Um, the only thing you need to do is the downshift speeds being moved up. You want to have those somewhere in the 8-ish to 5 mile an hour difference between their upshift um, you know correlations so you can see right here 37 percent throttle okay 21 miles an hour is where the one two shift happens okay nine miles an hour okay is the drop off to um, the speed that you'll have to overcome to get it to upshift again okay so what you can do is go in here at maybe 25 percent throttle to 81 ish percent We'll just do this. Copy all of the upshift tables, and then we'll paste them right here. Highlight them, and go minus five, plus. Okay, notice here we've got a drop from 32 to 20. You'd wanna interpolate that. Same thing here, 62 
67, you want to interpolate that, okay? This would be a good starting point. You'll notice now 16 to 11, 21 to 16, 34 to 29. That way, when the, when the vehicle goes to downshift, when you get on the throttle, um, it's not going to downshift so far and require so much more throttle input. So basically, you can have your foot at 50% 50, 50 throttle, and when it downshifts, it's going to be within five miles an hour of the next gear change, which is good. That's a good place to be. Um, a lot of people will say that you know the one two doesn't the one two shift doesn't run out far enough. You could come over here and you could increase this by four um, plus you could kind of interpolate this and then you could go about what I just showed you and you know maybe maybe 12 percent throttle and out you know you want you know the upshift speeds to be adjusted maybe you don't want it to happen until 31 percent throttle so you could come over here and again copy paste minus five something like that um, you could also um, just kind of globally work work your way up from 12% over here and you could just, you know, every now and then just add two miles per hour to it, okay? And just kind of see, maybe interpolate some of this, you know, and just kind of see what it does. It's really personal preference. This is, this is the last table that I always um, uh, change for customers. So um, because this is the one that will weird out your wife or your kids or, you know, your girlfriend or... Um, somebody else driving the vehicle, you know, when you add four or five miles an hour to these upshift, uh, this upshift table, you know, four or five miles an hour might equate to four or 500 RPM, which, you know, people that are not, you know, car folks, they're going to, uh, think that that there's something wrong with the vehicle. So just keep that in mind. Let this be a last resort. Also, once you start monkeying with this, it's going to also go in and put you in a different spot in your, uh, your VE and your spark tables, uh, your mass airflow table. And you're gonna, you know, you might run into some knock issues, okay? So you'll have to go back and readjust those items. So, yeah, um, the transmission stuff is always a lot of fun. This makes a big difference, uh, in my opinion. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Like, comment, subscribe, and what you'd like to see next, and we'll go from there. See ya.